right, hello students. Today I'm gonna to be talking about global winds and how and why they work together, how it looks like on the earth. So the first thing we need to do is draw a circle shape. So I'm gonna make this. So at the top here, I'm just going to type global winds. So the first thing we need to do is draw some lines for where our equator is and all the different latitudes that we're gonna be looking at. So let me get my drawing tool here. And towards the center here, we're going to have, sorry if it is not perfect. <laughs> and then we're gonna have another line here, another one here. There we go. So the first one we're going to have here is that equator, which is gonna be the center of our earth. So we have that at zero degrees. Then we're gonna go up north and then we're gonna go south. So the next latitude that's gonna be the main latitude to look at is going to be 30 degrees. And because we are in the Northern hemisphere, this is going to show an N. This next one will be 60 degrees north, again, cause it is in the Northern hemisphere. And then up here we have 90 degrees north as well. As we go south, we're going to have the same thing that happens at the top will happen to the bottom. So we have 30 degrees south. This is now south because we are in the southern hemisphere. We have 60 degrees south here. And then also at our pole down here, we have 90 degrees south. I will go ahead and draw a little compass here. Just as a little reminder for when we are talking about these winds. So the first thing we wanna look at is different pressures that are gonna be found at the different locations. The easiest one to take a look at, let me change this blue to a more prominent blue. There we go. The easiest thing to look at is where is it gonna be mostly cold and where is it gonna be mostly hot? So as we know, I'm gonna write a little note up here. We know that cold air is equal to high pressure. And we know that warm air or hot air is gonna be equal to low pressure. This will be signified by an L. So where do we know that we're going to have mostly hot temperatures? Well, we know at the equator, this is going to be the hotter region of our earth. So this is going to be a low pressure. So we're going to write an L right on here. Actually, let me make it a little bit thicker so we can see that. So we're going to have a low pressure there, okay? The next easiest one that we're going to do is find out where we're going to have cold temperatures. The poles do not get as much sunlight as other places like the equator. It's not as even of a heating. So we are going to place a high up here and also another high pressure down here at the South Pole. Now, when we are looking at these um, different 30 degrees and 60 degrees latitudes, we need to look also at the alternation of how they go. So if there is a low pressure here, that means the next one is going to be a high pressure and that will occur on both sides, the Northern hemisphere and also the Southern hemisphere, which leaves this last one at 60 degrees North and South to be a low pressure. So that's where you will see the alternation between high, low, high, low, high, low, and high. So the next thing that we need to look at is going to be the different convection cells that we're going to see. And I'm gonna draw that on this left-hand side over here. So we're gonna go ahead and show how that works. So as we know, warm air is going to rise and cooler air is going to sink. 
because warm air is less dense. So when we are here, we're going to have the air rising up this way. And then we're gonna have the cool air coming down and sinking back here. Now again, whatever goes um, to both sides will do, but we're gonna do the Northern Hemisphere first and then the Southern hem Hemisphere. Then you're gonna have the opposite effect because you're going from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, which is the direction in which wind goes. So we are going to draw air rising up this way, which means that cold air is going to sink down into here. And again, because air moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, again, we're gonna have it rising upwards here, because again, going from an area of high to low, and you have the cold air sinking back down here. So again, what occurs in the Northern Hemisphere also has to occur in the Southern Hemisphere. So let's go ahead and do the Southern Hemisphere now. So again, we have a latitude of high latitude, <clears throat> and it's going to go to an area of low latitude, or excuse me, to low pressure, but it's going to rise up at the low pressure belt, which means as that air rises, cool air is going to sink back down here. Same thing occurs over here. From an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, you're gonna have the warm air rising up towards this way where the low pressure belt is. And then your cold air is going to come down and sink down here. And then finally, the same thing occurs here. So it goes from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So arrow goes up that way and it sinks back down that way. So these are the different cells that we have. Um, I will go ahead and write the different ones. So this is going to be our Hadley cell. This next one is going to be our Feral cell. Oh, that looks like Fersal. <laughs> feral cell. And then this last one here is going to be the polar cell. I'm also gonna write here just so we can have it, just cause I didn't write it here before, but these are also known as the mid latitude cell, or it can be called the feral cell. And again, what happens to the top also occurs at the bottom. So here we also have our Hadley cell. Down here we have our mid latitude or our feral cell. And then finally the bottom is going to be our polar cell. Okay, because again what happens to the northern hemisphere also happens to the southern hemisphere. So let's go ahead and talk about our different winds that we have, and then we'll go into labeling our different latitudes. So we have winds that are named based on where they come from to where they are going, okay? So let me go ahead, I'm gonna use different colors for the winds right here between the zero degrees and the 30 degrees north or the 30 degrees south. We are gonna have something called our trade winds. Now our trade winds are gonna move from east to west. And again, they go from areas of high pressure. Wind goes from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So if we look over here at our compass, we will know that east is on the right-hand side and they are traveling to the west. So they are gonna go from east to west. Again, going from an area of high pressure pointing down to an area of low pressure. And that is the direction that they are going in. The same thing is gonna happen in the Southern hemisphere. So again, they will start in the east. Oops, they will start from the east, which means we have to start over here. And again, from going from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So it's going to look like so. Now, as we have discussed before, because of the rotation of the earth, it causes them to turn in either a clockwise or counterclockwise 
way. That is why you have them both meeting at the equator. However, they look like they're turning from different directions. So here I'm going to write in purple, trade winds. And these are gonna blow from east to west. Now scroll down just a little bit. And they occur between zero degrees to 30 degrees north or zero degrees to 30 degrees south. So those are gonna be your trade winds. The next set of winds that we're going to discuss are going to be called the westerlies. So I'm gonna write, oops, oops, sorry about that. We're gonna write that down here really quickly. I'm just gonna scroll down here. We have our westerlies. And they are going to be named based on from where they blow to where they are going. So if they have the word west in it, that means they are going to blow from west to east. So let's go ahead and go back up here and draw our winds. So again, if you look at your compass, we are now going to be looking at the west. So that means on the left-hand side of the globe over here, we are going to begin our winds. And again, wind is going to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So from west to east, they are going to curve in this direction. And again, what is done in the Northern Hemisphere must also be done in the Southern Hemisphere. So again, from west to east, from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, they're going to curve in that direction. So these are going to go between 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north, oops, or 30 degrees south to 60 degrees south. So this here is going to be the polar easterlies. Because this has the word east in it, you should know that this is going to blow from east to west. So let's scroll back up here. Now we are going to be looking at the east. So again, air is going to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And we're gonna go from east to west. So we are going to point them in this direction here. Again, what is done to the Northern Hemisphere must also be done to the Southern Hemisphere. So again, it's gonna blow from East to West and we're gonna go from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back down here to the bottom and write, these occur between 60 degrees North to 90 degrees North or 60 degrees south to 90 degrees south. And that is the conclusion of our global winds and how the movement is for each of them. Again, this is going to be the global winds. I know it looks a little complicated, a little um, intimidating to see it all, but if you watched it from the beginning to the end and saw how each of these, why they turned in which directions that they turned, Again, traveling from high to low concentrations or from east to west. Again, it's all labeled here so you can watch the video again and again if you need to. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.